ultimately we're trying to set them up in the best way possible so that they can dream to play professional women's hockey. We believe that young girls should have the same dreams and aspirations as the young boys. And so one day there's going to be a little eight-year-old boy who's going to look at the eight-year-old girl and say, you can play professional hockey too. What do you want them to understand that you're trying to do and these players are trying to do for the future? What do you want the message to be that's left with the younger generation? The message is that we are fighting for the future of our sport. Yeah! Yeah, I think a women's professional league will help change the culture of the sport in our country. No. No. Now two sticks is illegal in a game. No. No. For mama? I want to be a, a good role model for June and show her, you know, what you know, the dedication and discipline and passion it takes to try to excel at something. I don't want her to think that there's limitations because of her gender. It's time for a new era in sport. One that honors the brave. We wanted to create a space for them where they could come and feel comfortable. The bold. He really opened my eyes to having black people obviously in hockey and playing with them. The people that look different. I'm gonna get in the sled and see how far it goes. Blind hockey not just changed my life, but he always saved it. This is a 12 part series about individuals and organizations who are determined to redefine hockey culture and to inspire a new and diverse generation of hockey fans. One day there's gonna be a little eight-year-old boy who's gonna look at the eight-year-old girl and say, you can play professional hockey too. Woo, let's go ladies! My name is Saroya Tinker. I'm a professional hockey player and philanthropist. And this is Breaking Down Barriers. Brought to you in part by Canadian Tire proud sponsor of Breaking Down Barriers. It is an extraordinary time for women's hockey. A new women's professional league will be competing in North America in January 2024. Last summer, a deal was brokered between rival factions in the sport the PHF and the PWHPA. The agreement ends a feud between the seven-team Premier Hockey Federation and the PWHPA, an association comprised of many US and Canadian national team members. For the last two seasons, I've played for the PHF's Toronto Six. I am proud of the players and management who have helped set a new standard for professional women's hockey to continue to build on. We talked about uh, playing like playoff hockey. Okay, let's, this game I want it to be like a playoff game. Let's see what we have in us for playoff hockey and let's start getting ready mentally for that. So every game is like a playoff game if we want first place. There you go, just one walk for your video. <laughs> and I think that's what we want. Is that what we want? Yeah. Is that what we want? Yeah. yeah. Zone, guys, let's work a lot on the give and go to the net. Just crash the net. Just get to the pucks at the net, crash the net. We gotta be careful, no block shots deep. And I think I mentioned earlier, if you want to shoot it wide, it's bouncing out. Those boards are lively. So if we can look for that 2D, if it was a more direct shot instead of missing it and it's rim -bird. I was fortunate enough to play, you know, in the first Worlds, the first Olympics, and, and be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and that was something as well I never ever thought would ever happen in my lifetime. And now for me to be a part of a professional women's hockey league is, it's unbelievable, and just, it's amazing how far the game's come. We are underway in this Battle of Canada. A pair of three to two victories for Toronto in the province of Quebec, the first time these two teams met. They were two outstanding games, and we hope for more of the same today. Montreal in the white, Toronto at home in the red. Pressure, pressure, guys, come on. 
Right back in, right back in, that's it. Change it up, change it up. I think it's, it's important for the future of our game um, to, you know, establish a, a ceiling uh, of uh, professionalism in women's hockey. Played in across the line by Venetia. Fane shot by Wilson Bennett and she scores! A fantastic move by Brianne Wilson Bennett to create some space. People want to see women's hockey every day. Not just once a year at the Olympics. They want to be able to see their stars play. You got me, you got me! Yeah, 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 step, step. Yeah, two shots, two shots. You got time, you got time. She has good speed. Comes in one on three, toe drag! And that one hits off the post! Ooh. Rebound, they score! Dark oh. Angela followed things up and she bangs it home! I watched this game grow from when girls really didn't play hockey and there wasn't a lot of girls hockey teams. There wasn't even a national team. So I've seen the game grow quite a bit. Woo, let's go ladies. Let's go, let's go. It's a huge commitment, but they love it. They love the game and, uh, and you see it on the ice. They're very skilled hockey players. Go, go, go. Go T. Yeah, go Shy. wheel, wheel, wheel. Help her out, help her out. I kind of get chills thinking about it. Like, we didn't have that. I didn't have that growing up. Like, I had the NHL and then I had like Olympians. Now it's cool, like even autograph sessions after our games and things. You see little kids like in awe, right? And I think it's awesome. Like it really is. We can be role models for them and be like, you can do this as a full-time job, you know, when you get older and now they can see it. Fame shot by Wilson Bennett and she scores! And did I mention, we're the champs. The Toronto Six won the 2023 Isabel Cup, the first championship in franchise history. Anisima wins it! Toronto, their first ever Isabel Cup! This segment is brought to you by Canadian Tire. NHL All-Star Weekend is underway, including the Beach Festival on Fort Lauderdale Beach. If you're going to have a hockey all-star game in South Florida, you have to take it to the beach. And that's exactly what the NHL has done with this festival going on all weekend long. Women's sports are where it's at right now. There's the desire to watch them play. There are women who play the sport at top levels. It's entertaining. They're at the top of their game. They're with the top of the game in the men's side of the sport. It's showcasing their skill. It's being broadcast on television. They're just as good in their side of the sport as the men are. And I think it's very important to see them alongside the best in the sport. It's always special to be able to, you know, combine both men's and women's hockey, you know. It's the same game at the end of the day, and, you know, we all love it. And it's so special to be here today and to see all these fans out here supporting not only the guys, but also us women here. It's, you know, it's super special to be here today. I was so excited to get the opportunity to do this and you know what it means for women in sport, especially hockey. Young girls and boys watching us on the same ice surface, same screen as the top men in the world. Um, it just means everything and I'm super excited to be here. I think intentionality. You normalize the faces of those that may not be seen as normal in any sport by constantly providing exposure and that's why you know, the involvement in skills is important. Okay, so if we can take that one more time. Okay. It's important for the next generation of women's hockey players to have their own professional and sustainable league because it really just shows the growth of the sport, uh, not only at the grassroots level, but at the professional level. You know, they're the best in the world in where they play, obviously, so why not have them here? And I showcase their, uh, their talent together with us. I think it's a great thing. Versus to Darkin! Oh, the Forsberg! Zara throws it 
dirty. She's so good. I look at how successful you know we were able to be at that skills competition and the respect that we were given by the male players. Sarah Nurse, nice pull that she lifted to the camera too. Pulls off the potion Sarah stamp move. So the Forsberg, the Forsberg, Forsberg. <laughs> wow. I think it's no secret that the NHL is the global leader for hockey and so the fact that they're recognizing the value that we bring as women to the game is very important and being able to be you know have that platform and be on that stage was huge for again not only the women and not only the girls but for the men to see us too. We believe that young girls should have the same dreams and aspirations as the young boys. One day there's going to be a little eight-year-old boy who's going to look at the eight-year-old girl and say, you can play professional hockey too. And I think that is something that's pretty special and something that's coming. Well, as we told you at the top of the show, big news for women's hockey. It is being reported that the Professional Women's Hockey Player Association is buying out the Premier Hockey Federation, creating a path forward for a brand new pro women's hockey league all under one roof. The deal is backed by the Mark Walters Group and Billie Jean King Enterprises, who both finance the PWHPA. Led by Hockey Hall of Famer and Olympic gold medalist Jaina Hefford, the PWHPA is a players association made up of some of the best players in the world. Is everything set for next weekend? Do we have the schedule and itinerary set yet? Okay, great. I think everyone will enjoy it. It'll be a, a successful weekend. Great, thanks for all your help with this. Appreciate it. We'll see you next weekend. Okay. So the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association is an association that was built and led by players. Happens to be the best players in the world. It's the Sarah Nurses, the Mary Philippe Poulin, the Hillary Knights, the Kendall Coins. Hey, how are you? Um, just checking in to see if we're all good for this weekend. I know we've got the hotel set, uh, meals, buses, anything outstanding that, that we need to work on right now? We started with the guidance of Billie Jean King and we all know very well her story and what she was able to do and now we look at where women's tennis is and that was because there was a group of women that sacrificed parts of their careers to make it better for others. They had all been parts of various leagues over the course of their careers and um, had never had the opportunity to play in one that was destined for long-term success or had sustainability element to it. So they decided they weren't going to play in any professional league until one existed that provided the infrastructure, the resources, um, the salaries, the benefits that we would expect from a lot of professional sports. Inside winger, what are you doing? What's your first, your first priority? Inside winger, if you lose or if the puck's sitting there, help, right? And if they're, if they're forward, hey, if their forward's coming, coming up top, you're the one kind of stepping in there and that D, that D's chasing. Center, what are you doing on a win? Where do you go, Nursey? You're locked, what if you win it? All right, another thing on top of that, just let's shorten them up. We only got 10 forwards, right? So especially early on, right, when we have that change, let's keep them fresh and let's try to have them in their zone. And they've made a decision to change the landscape of women's professional hockey. All right, let's not wait for them to start start the game. All right, we can start it out. All right, we'll start with uh, Nursey, your group. All right, we got uh, Renata, Joss, Maddie, Annette. All right, come on, White, first five here. They don't want the next generation of hockey players to have to fight this battle. We just, we don't want to get pucks stopped. So center, we're going to have you come super low and help. Be an option. These little, these little plays in here will be there. A rim or keep it going will be there. So we want these bottles up in here. They know they can change it now, and then we could set future generations up for success. The name 
of our, our, our tour that we've, you know, called it for the last couple of years is the Dream Gap Tour because there, there is a gap that exists between what young boy hockey players can dream about doing and what young female hockey players can dream about doing. And we wanted to close that gap. What we're looking for, again, is a league that focuses on performance of athletes. They want to set their athletes up for success. And for us, that looks like longevity in playing. You know, you look at the men, and when they play hockey, they're able to play for so long because they have a staff, they have medical staff, treatment staff, they have their coaches, they have nutritionists, and that's something that doesn't currently exist for women. So when we think about professionalism of a hockey league for us as players, that's really what we're looking for. We've decided for four years now to not play professionally. There has been some options that we could play in a professional league, but we've chosen that we've wanted to stay connected as a group and, and see out the mission that we set on um, years ago to, to create that truly professional league that has all the amenities that we need to allow us to be truly professional athletes, but also give the fans um, and the public the right experience and show our game at the highest level. This logo, the PWHBA logo, is different than any logo any player's ever played for. It stands for a lot more than just a team. And the most important thing about our movement is that all the top players are together and we all have the same vision going in the same direction. <laughs> I think it's, it's a really valuable lesson for these young boys to see that women can play at the highest level and, and they can teach them the game of hockey. You know, I believe in giving back. I know how much hockey gave me, and I think as a, a young kid, you don't understand the importance of volunteers and coaches and people that make it all work. For my son to be able to, to coach with his team, I think it's, it's a really valuable lesson. I just think it's, it's critical. Do, do. I see June. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you think Mama can do it? Ask Mama to do it. What am I doing? What what sound do I make? Junie, do it. What's what's Mama supposed to do? Is it this? Do, do, do. Oftentimes these days she'll sleep for a couple hours from like twelve to two or three. But at daycare, she'll do like two smaller naps. No, no. Oh. <laughs> now two sticks is illegal in a game, but we'll let it slide. Good job. No. Yeah. For mama? Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Although it's a bit of a mess right now. I set it up yesterday for like an obstacle course for June, so. Um, that was first Olympics in 2014. And then we have, this isn't the complete collection, but we have a 2021 World Championship one in the corner, which was a special one. And then that's Haley, my wife, when she won U18 Worlds. And then we have one where we are both on the team, which is kind of, Cool. June likes to point out both of us in it, so not that one, this one, this one, both of us were on the team, so she likes to be held up and walk her, <laughs> take her around to each of the photos and she gets to point out people, so.
you know, I want to be a, a good role model for June and um, show her, you know, what, you know, the dedication and discipline and passion it takes to, to try to excel at something. Um, I don't want her to think that there's limitations because of her gender. This has been, you know, challenging for the last couple of years, you know, missing out on some of your, your prime years of, of playing. Um, but we understood that kind of from the get-go that this wasn't going to be, um, you know, for our immediate benefit, it was going to be for the next generation. So to have a viable professional women's hockey league in Canada changes the narrative of hockey in Canada. It alters it from one that is about hockey being a white man's sport um, towards a more fulsome understanding of citizens in Canada and who's included and historically has been excluded from the game. So the PWHBA has worked uh, tirelessly to try to create a different dream pathway for, for young girls and young boys. I think it's equally as important for young boys to see um, women succeeding in sport um, and to go and cheer them on and uh, see them as legitimate competitors, just like they have their NHL stars. Yeah. Will there be a women's professional league? Well, there already is, and there already was. Just like the NHL went through a number of iterations before it even turned a profit. So will there be a women's league that is profitable? Yes, there will be. What do you want them to understand that you're trying to do and these players are trying to do for the future? What do you want the message to be that's left with the younger generation? The message is that we are fighting for the future of our sport. You know, I have two daughters now and the thought of telling them or my son that they can't do something or can't dream to be something because of their gender is something I never want to do. And I know this next generation, they, they look at the world differently than we did and their minds are open and, and they, don't, they don't judge the same way we did when it comes to gender or you know, the injustices that exist. So for these young boys, these young girls that are watching, not only for them to be inspired to play professional hockey one day in their life, but I think even just believing that if you, if you want something done, um, you can work towards it.